All right, uh, Don, I'm going to make you a panelist. And then I'm going to unmute you. Everyone stick around for the consummate bear. Don Mead, Seven Sentinels. Okay, you're unmuted, Don. Um, I got you. Okay, you're hearing me okay, Dale? Yeah, so if you want to share your screen, you just scroll your uh, mouse. There's a green box that says share. Scroll it along the bottom or top, and you click it and share the yeah, screen you want to show. It's going to ask you if you want to take the screen from me. You say yes, and then it's going to give you a pop-up window asking you which screen you want to set in case you have more than one screens. Oh, I see. Actually, I would prefer to use screen two. Okay. Well, you just That's, it it just totally. And now are you seeing uh, a chart that says uh, moment of truth and has the standard and force 500? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Moment of truth. And uh, you know what? There's something about the markets, Don, that uh, does speak to truth. Uh, money is where the rubber meets the road and people are voting with their wallet. So um, definitely a huge break. Uh, I think a lot of people on Twitter were looking for 30, 40, 30, 50 S&Ps. And I kept pounding the table saying, you know, too many people looking for one number. It either doesn't get there or blows through it. So obviously we had this uh, pretty big break, weekly ugly candle last Friday. I'm real interested in what the Sentinels are doing here. Excellent. Well, let me just say, uh, first of all, thank you for having me back. And uh, it's a great time to be alive. And I mean that very sincerely. You know uh, what, Don? Any day when you're looking down at the grass is a good day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, but, bull market, bear market, range market. That's the, that's the way I see it. That is a great way to look at life. And I <laughs> share that. <laughs> um, but, okay, so uh, uh, I, I think we're going to be hearing about rain making kind of potential in the market here. Yes, you are. Okay. Oh, without a doubt. Um, first of all, you're looking at the uh, screen for 7sentinels.com, I hope. And do you see the Veritas? We are. Um, Parit? Yes. That means truth never dies. Okay. Uh, that's, that's our motto. Uh, today, uh, in addition to our motto, I'm going to talk about our mission. And I'm going to talk about uh, the seven sentinels themselves. I've never really fully explained them in any of the interviews we've done, so I'll see if I can do that briefly this morning. You're the captain. All righty. Thank you, Dale. And it's great to be with you. Ditto. Uh, let's see. I've got to figure out how to click on my top menus here without there's something that comes down onto them. But but at any rate, um, let's talk. Oh, this is irritating. This is going to be a problem because what happens is when I try to go up here. Oh, well, OK, we'll start right here. Um, oh, uh, Rio's already commenting that you're a cool guest. And you know what, Rio? I have one comment to you. Steve Bolge is one of the best uh, FX traders I've ever met, and I've met thousands. Okay, go ahead, Don. Okay, thank you. Um, the reason I said it's a great time to be alive is because I see where we are in the market as right on the precipice of a very, very exciting period of time in the market. Um, it's no secret, I'm sure, that Jesse Livermore is, is probably my one uh, figure in uh, historical perspective with, with regard to markets that I look up to the most. And uh, I think the most notable thing that Jesse Livermore ever did was to align himself at the very beginning of the 1929 to 1932 bear market and ride that entire market through its John, cycle. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Because, you know, a lot of people think August is not a significant month. And I brought up that the low in 82 was in August, and then someone told me was. the high in 29 was in August. And that's absolutely correct. Okay, here we are. <laughs> yeah, it, it, 
Yeah, it peaked in <clears throat> August of 1929, and that first leg of the crash uh, went down to the October 29 low. And, and the market lost almost 50% on that move. But at any rate, here we are in August of uh, 2019. And I want to show you, oh, uh, to, to continue uh, what I was saying about Livermore, in that move, from uh, the, the peak in 29 to the bottom in 32, he took his account to, well, he emerged at the tail end of that with an uh, with $100 million in cash. That's equivalent <clears throat> in 2019 dollars to $1.2 billion. Quite an accomplishment for a trader, I think, especially since he started that venture uh, originally back in the 1890s with $5. He never had another job in his life other than trading the market uh, after he was 16 years old. He was a, a uh, chalkboard uh, marker in a brokerage firm when he was 15 and 16 years old. Why did he commit he suicide, Don? Jesse Livermore had a lifelong issue with depression. depression. And in, in, in the 30s and 40s, um, the there really was treated. no effective treatment at all for depression. Yeah, people like would just depression. use alcohol, oh, like Winston no. Churchill. And, yeah. No, uh, there, are, there are all kinds of myths about uh, what happened and why it happened and that he went broke and so on and so on. He never went broke. Okay. Uh, it was he just was, depression. He worth a mere five million. <laughs> When, okay. when he died. See, people don't understand, and they're starting to begin to understand um, how powerful depression can be. I mean, with, you know, people like, uh, would you ever think Robin Williams would yeah. commit suicide or Anthony Bourdain? And, oh, yeah. you know, what a dangerous disease depression is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it, and it took Jesse, unfortunately, in the end. Okay. That um, depresses me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's get on to it. Do but I, have I have an antidote for depression because okay. I, I've been diagnosed with it before. Okay, so here's my antidote. When the darkness of depression begins to creep in, turn your eyes to the light of gratefulness because you can't be depressed and grateful simultaneously. Oh, wow, that is so, that? That is so true. That okay, is the, bro, I'm, I'm through interrupting you. Okay, no, that's fine, because uh, I, I just uh, could not agree more that gratitude is a very... So DJ told me to lock my gun away. I, I, gave it, I gave my guns away. Okay, anyway, what we're looking at here is the uh, Standard & Poor's 500 weekly coming up to the top in the year 2000. This is 1998. This is right. the year 2000. Standard Poor's 500 coming up to its uh, exact peak in the year 2000. Here is the weekly RSI for that Standard Poor's 500. The RSI is, as most know, it's a relative strength index. I won't go into the complicated math involved, but uh, it, notice that as the market was coming up, it was diverting. Um, it, it reached its first peak in the 70s and then around 70 on the next peak. And then at the final peak, its reading was about 63. Now let's switch to the 2007 peak coming off of 2000 and and six, up, up, up goes the Standard Poor's 500, and down, down, down comes the weekly RSI, and it peaks at about 63 on that third top. Um, oh shoot, I don't think I have it in this array. Maybe I do, maybe so I don't, but, but let me just tell you. <laughs> Is that where we peaked a week or so ago on the RSI? Me? Yes. Okay. Um, Oh, actually, here it is. This will work well. This is for the New York Stock Exchange composite, but it's you the same the thing idea. as the uh, market made its first high, its second high. Oh, yeah, this is it. 
the market made its first high in January 2018. It made it a higher high in October of 2018. It made its final high last week on July 28th. And now let's take a look at what the weekly RSI did. It made its first peak clear back in January of 2018 on that first peak. Uh, it made a lower high below 70 on that second peak and lo and behold last week when it peaked 63 was the reading same exact weekly reading on the rsi as it was at the peak in 2000 before uh, an 80 percent decline in the nasdaq uh, composite and as it was in 2007 at the peak of the standard and poor's before a 60% decline in the Standard & Poor's 500. Okay. Um, we, we've carved out the same exact pattern. I'm gonna back up for one second and just say, <laughs> here's where we go to our rainmakers. Um, that I'm having trouble here because something that I'm getting from you is encroaching on that top area. Oh, that's all right. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of our page, I'm sorry okay. that we're having this problem. But if you go down to the bottom of our page, we have a whole bunch of articles that are uh, linked. If you go to 7sentinels.com. There you go. They're up. Yeah. If you go to 7sentinels.com, down to the bottom of the page, all of these articles are available to, any, to anybody uh, who wants to click on them to read. You don't have to be a member of 7sentinels.com or a subscriber to read these articles. You just click on them and read them. There are several articles here. Here's the Rainmaker. Here's the Red Sky in the Morning. Here's When Worlds Collide. I'm sure you haven't forgotten that one. Um, Please talk about the fact that in the year 2017 and 2018 and ultimately into 2019, well, mostly 17 and 18, the markets produced the quintessential top. By that, I mean that if you take a look at measures of greed, measures of uh, lack of fear, measures of internal weakness as measured by advanced declines, volume, number of new highs, uh, as measured by things like Hindenburg omens and, and uh, uh, the black swan index and, and all sorts of measures. We had the quintessential top in the year 2018 by those measures. By that, I mean the most extreme numbers that we've had in 50, 60, 70 years. You mean last December were the most extreme numbers or recent? Various years? times throughout 2018. Okay. Uh, those numbers hit records that we'd never seen before. So 2017, 2018 provided the top and it was the quintessential top. It is a top, I think, that when uh, long after you and I are gone, Dale, 50 years from now, they're going to be looking back at, at 2018 at those tops, and they're going to be talking about the, uh, the how extreme and uh, those were and how those pointed out the top that a lot of people weren't recognizing at the time. So, okay, now we had the whole top set up in 2018, 2019. Then we had the as we were just talking about the uh, couple of uh, thunderstorms, a couple of thunderstorms, the pattern of of peaking on lower and lower highs, um, and of course here was last week. I'm sorry, I'm 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 having trouble this morning getting myself getting okay, Don, You're doing fine. The screen setup that we've got going here. You're doing fine. Okay, great. Okay, so here we are um, in 2000. Uh, here are those three tops that I talked about: January 2018, October 2018, and 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 uh, last week in July of 2019. Notice at that time the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index did not confirm. Right. Yeah, it made a lower high. Second lower high. 
and then a second lower high. Exactly. That's a triple top. That's a magnificent triple top. It's an amazing triple top, and I hope I've got it on this particular array. Um, no, I don't. Uh, but if you look at it at the long-term version of that triple top, it, it stands out as one of the, the most magnificent tops that I've ever seen because it spanned a period of 18 months. If you look at the, uh, uh, at the tops in 2007, the top in 2000, the top in uh, 1980, uh, the various tops along the way, um, it, it, they're very distinct. You can see them clearly on the charts, but they normally uh, only take about a year to complete, uh, sometimes only a number of months. This one has spanned a full 18 months. It's the biggest top, it's the clearest top, uh, and it followed the, the, the readings that, that we talk about. Now- Does that speak to magnitude? Because yes. I mean, let's talk about it, Don. We've been okay. uh, together a few times. And we've had some nice corrections and nice breaks, but they ended up being a top rather than the top. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that uh, the magnitude and the time it's taken to develop it makes it that much more significant? Than absolutely, other absolutely. Okay. Um, Tell us how, how much more is, significant. You know, it is the fact that they, each one of those was a top and not the top that actually uh, in the big picture is, is, is drawing, uh, we, we can draw some inferences that are pretty ominous. We had a top in January of 2018 and boom, we saw this and we found out it wasn't the top. We and, then Merry, another new and then Merry Christmas. Right? Same thing, Merry Christmas down into Christmas Eve right here. And then boom, uh, same thing again. So what's happened is this has emboldened the bulls. This has made the crowd very, very complacent. And they're saying, oh, well, you know, these breaks, yeah, we have breaks in the market, uh, but it always comes back. Don't yeah, worry. That is the mentality. What it has actually done is carved out the biggest top that we've seen in the last half century. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the seven sentinels themselves. And uh, I moved everything onto another screen and it's causing me to for not know exactly where everything, oh, okay, it would be on the screen. Uh, let's talk about the seven sentinels themselves. I'm going to describe them briefly. Since li uh, my studies of Livermore over a lifetime uh, brought me to the conclusion that what really matters in the market is not a setup. It is not what we think is going to happen because the market has set up in a certain way. It is what is happening now in the market. Livermore always talked about the, the fact that uh, he traded with the line of least resistance. He identified the line of least resistance, he aligned with it, and he stayed with it. That's very different than finding a setup, taking it, and then jumping out. Uh, he would align with the entire line of least resistance and stay with it. So, How did he identify that line of least resistance? Th that is a bit of a mystery. I, I think he may have held that back from the biographers, frankly. Okay. Uh, he talks about it uh, a little bit in some of his other books, but he never goes into great detail. So Selfish. what it caused me to do, though, was to set out to find a way of identifying at any given time what the line of least resistance is. Okay. And, and that's what back, your sentinels do. Uh, yeah, yes. Back in 2004, um, in uh, furtherance of that endeavor, I invented the seven sentinels. The seven sentinels are seven measures of market trends that I found when they align, when all seven point in one direction, uh, you can count on the trend being in effect and staying in effect until all seven uh, align in the opposite direction. Those seven are based on the McClellan uh, oscillator, the McClellan summation, um, 
each of those two for the New York and each of those two for the NASDAQ. And then also I use moving averages of the VIX, moving averages of the VIXEN, which is VIX for the NASDAQ. And then finally, uh, the seventh sentinel is the uh, BP comp. It's the uh, percentage of all the stocks on the NASDAQ that are in bullish patterns using point and figure uh, analysis. But at any rate, <clears throat> um, I, I set up a, a system where I track the moving averages of all of these things. And when the moving averages cross, uh, or the short-term moving average crosses below the longer-term moving average, that's a downtrend. On, on each of those seven, I then, over the years since 2004, uh, broke those down into monthly, weekly, daily, and the two-hour seven sentinels. Um, something that has happened this week that is highly, highly significant is the following. Every single one of those, the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and the two-hour sentinels went to zero, uh, zero up, seven down sell signals. All of them have flashed sell signals simultaneously, the most important being the monthly and the weekly, because the monthly has only given three signals in the last two years. It's only given uh, uh, probably a, a, a handful in the last 10 years. But it is now on sale, the monthly, as is okay. the weekly, as is the daily, and as is the two hour. Uh, this is the clearest and most magnificent sell signal um, that I've encountered yet. Okay, let me ask you something. Now. So yeah. your sentinels uh, tell you whether it be long or short based upon the mix of the sentinels, and you know, Absolutely. unanimous, unanimous uh, uh, cells are. Very strong signals. Well, know, yes, but uh, unanimous is the only signal I take. Okay. No, uh, 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 let, let me say let me seven my question. And have to agree to produce a signal that okay. uh, that that we take that we okay. trade. Okay, so Go it gives ahead. you a sell or a buy. My question is, does it? How do you figure out magnitude of what the potential is for these signals, or you don't have to? You just sit there and stay with it as long as the Sentinels are saying whatever they're saying. You just said it. That's, okay. that's it. Okay. Um, as I often say, I really don't even concern myself particularly with magnitude or targets. I okay. care about at any given time only one thing, and that's direction. I yeah. only want to be aligned with the, with the direction of the market right now. Now I can infer from the size of this top, the magnitude of this top, that it is a doozy. It is, it is huge. It is huge. Okay. I, I can assume from that, um, probably correctly, that this decline will be as significant as the 2000 decline and the 2007 decline and probably more so. And I know that's a kind of a scary thought for a lot of us. It's an exciting thought for me because okay. I'm with it. I'm writing it down. All right. Okay. So I, I see that our time is clicking off here. You have as much time as you want, Don, but uh, if you have more to say, that's fine. If not, you know, you could go to your website and show people how they could Good follow idea. you and uh, see what your Swiss guard. Good I, idea. I imagine in my head your seven sentinels are like, the Swiss guard uh, surrounding the Pope, and you're kind of like, <laughs> you're the Pope of bearishness. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I'll do so in just a second. Uh, I'll Here kiss your those... ring at 2100 S&Ps. Pardon me? I'll kiss your ring at 2100 S&Ps. Okay, okay. Right. Go ahead. Uh, but at any rate, here are the monthly seven sentinels yeah. contained in these five charts. Uh, here are the weekly contained in these five charts. Here are the daily contained in these five charts. So a day, a day like today, a recovery after a, 
Uh, yes. 3% move is really a gift to start. Uh, would you scale in during oh. this retracement? Oh, boy. Or what? what a great question. I wish I had uh, started uh, <laughs> addressing that earlier. Um, we uh, started, uh, we went short back on, on July 29th because I got the signals. And uh, we got up to about 50% short, but I did not want to exceed 50% short, short triple leveraged inverse ETFs, by the way. So that's 150% short. Uh, because I regarded, regarded and do regard 29.13 as the line in the sand. I wanted to see 29.13 taken out before I felt totally confident that the move is on now and here. Um, so I went about 50% short. Yesterday, as the market was uh, down uh, uh, six, seven, eight hundred points, uh, I scaled out of, took that down to 33%. Today, uh, we are bouncing on the open. What I kind of think is going to happen is we're going to bounce up here and then we're going to take a midday slide. And on that, I'll probably take my position down to about 20%. But then I look for a bounce of anywhere from, you know, Fibonacci 0 0.318 uh, to Halfway 0 back. So 8 to 1. Uh, so 2913 was a big number to you. Yes. Uh, we could rebound there. I think that'd be about 61. Yes. So what I'm looking for is a bounce in the market. Um, and then as my short-term sentinels uh, – roll over and turn back down and then i'm going to take it up to nearly 100 percent short so i'm looking for a bounce up into the 29 13 area yes that's a that's a good target uh somewhere in there but i will move when the sentinels tell me to move and uh, i'll uh, take it up to close to 100 percent short at that time did the sentinels tell you to cover some shorts yesterday uh, no. Well, no, in a funny sort of way, to ring the here's, here's what I mean by that. Um, yesterday was one of the few times when uh, I had absolutely universal zero seven readings from the monthly all the way down to the three minute <laughs> sentinels. And when I get zero seven readings on every single index universally without exception, that's usually that's telling me we are really oversold and we're going to bounce. Okay. And that's when I started taking some off, and okay. I'll be taking some 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 more off today for that same reason because that happened. Unless we go straight up, and then I'll just ride through it. I, I don't care because uh, I'm in it for the long pull. Uh, uh, any guess on the duration of this? Not the magnitude, but I think. <laughs> I, I, as crazy as this may sound, I think we're. I think the bear market will take us into 2021. Okay. Um, here are the links at the bottom of the website, and as I indicated, I would recommend that people go back and read some of these articles about Red Sky in the Morning or One World Sky that talk about the excesses of the 2018 market. Here's limited time trial uh, because I really want people to get involved. Now, at the beginning of this move, um, I'm running the best uh, special uh, uh, offer, the limited time trial offer that I've offered all year or will offer the rest of the year. They can have a full week for just $4.95 if they click on that link. Boy, so, you're going to be going to McDonald's a lot. That's right. That's right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, you want to show it? Please. Pardon? Click it. Let's see it. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, so uh, you can follow Don on Twitter at Seven Sentinels, and that's also his website, www Seven Sentinels, spelled S E N T I N E L S dot com. That's right. Anything you want to wrap it with? The most uh, uh, one thing people should keep in mind uh, the rest of the summer, Don. Um, uh, I don't know what that would be other than I think this is the uh, oh, best game ever devised by man, and I am really pleased to be a part of it, and I'm uh, pleased uh, that you are too, Dale. Well, thank you. May uh, uh, this rainmaker rain pips down on you, Don. Thank you. Uh, and all your subscribers, 
good hunting the rest of this trading season and uh i have you booked for october so we'll see how things play out oh you kept uh, that one okay uh, yeah I, I kept that one for you and uh we'll see how things have played out into uh the perilous month of october and the scariest day of the year halloween that's right uh, that's right Thank you, Don. Exciting. Thank you so much, Dale. I've really appreciated uh, all that you do and being with you today. Um, love it, my trading warrior brother. Glad <laughs> to serve. So uh, that's it for our Turnaround Tuesday, everyone. Thank Don. Give its trial a shot. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Don. Yep. Good day.